All right, go ahead. Okay, this is a selection of camouflage uniforms worn by the U.S. military from 1942 to 2018. The first camouflage uniform the United States adopted was in 1942. And what they did is they hired a bunch of civilian professors in a college to design a camouflage uniform. And they came out with this design, sometimes called the frog suit. And you can see it's reversible. And it was a tan side for beaches or for desert. And if we used to say, the green side. Now, when this uniform first came out, it was issued, not as general issue, but to special troops. Uh, for example, Marine Raider Battalions were given this. Uh, Marine Paratroopers were given this. All right. At first, they thought it was a good idea, but after a while, they started to realize that this uniform was good as long as you were stationary. If you started moving, it actually attracted the eye. So the idea was, maybe this is not a good thing. But they kept the design, the Marine Corps kept the design. They used it for their helmet covers, and that became the iconic Marine helmet for World War II and Korea, is the reversible frog pattern. The Marines also made their poncho, um, sorry, their ponchos out of a similar design. Uh, they made their shelter halves with a similar design. And the uniform itself was not manufactured after World War II. The biggest use became actually civilians because, well, if it's good enough for the military, it must be good for civilians. So this started to eventually get the reputation of duck hunter camouflage. And the biggest use of duck hunter camouflage outside of the milita uh, military was the Central Intelligence Agency, which supplied Brigade 2506, the Cubans that landed at the Bay of Pigs. And there are many pictures of them wearing this uniform. So the Marines eventually kept this uniform more for support troops. Now the Army, they also went for this. They originally made a jumpsuit, which I happen to have in my collection, which is a pain to get into, and even a bigger pain to get out of. And that caused a lot of problems in the Pacific Campaign, because guys got dysentery. And when you had to take a dump, you had to struggle with your long suit. The Army also used this design for their jungle pack, which I also have in my collection. Basically, it's a backpack with this design. Now, when the Army used this in Europe, they had to stop. Why? Friendly fire, fratricide, blue on blue. Americans were shooting Americans. Why? Because if you wore this, people confused you with an SS unit. So that was another example of why this particular uniform was, was dropped. Even Japanese collectors grab things, uh, targets of opportunity for other countries. All right. Now, after the war, the Engineer Research Development Lab, or ERDL, was assigned the mission of creating a camouflage uniform. And what they did is they created what we call the leaf pattern. Now, they created a pattern that was green with like leaves and could be reversed. This happens to be a shelter half. Okay? Now, you're going to find people are going to show you they got hats, they got pants, they got jackets. That's because anybody that is aware of it in Southeast Asia or Asia, you can go, there's lots of sewing machines, lots of scissors, and if you go to Papa San and go make this into a hat, make this into a uniform, he goes to Mama San, her and the kids go in the back, and they will produce anything for you if you give them the cloth. Now, why the ERDL cloth design, the only ones to really adopt it were the Marines. The Marine, this is a Marine shelter half, okay? The Marines adapted it as a shelter half to replace the early pattern shelter halves that are seen in all the movies because that's what they used in World War II and Korea. So the Marines went to this. They also decided they wanted a helmet cover in this design. So they had a helmet cover that was also reversible. And that's the one that's most identified with Vietnam. Now, in the late 1950s, the Defense Supply Agency decided this is too expensive. And they sort of told the Marines, your, your shelter halves are going to be plain green. And the Army, which had developed a plain green helmet cover, was told, no, you're going to get a helmet cover in the ERDL pattern. After all, the Army created it, right? So the Vietnam War helmets are this. The tents are hard to find, the shelter halves, but it's called ERDL, all right? Um, now, leaf pattern. Going, now, going back with yeah. this, 
I gotta say that I did earlier videos with uh, Joe that had he had this. Mm -hmm. He had the uh, this camouflage right. pattern in his collection. So got to refer back to those. Uh, yeah, we got to refer back to any Marine Corps World War II. This is very again was uh, very popular. Uh, many examples. Now, oh. again, and then Brigade 2506. Also in Vietnam. A lot of the advisors wanted camouflagers, I'm going to get into, and they, this was no longer in the supply system, but you could go to your Sears catalog and get Duck Hunter, which was of course what Brigade 2506 had. Many of the guys at Brigade 2506 actually had this with happy hunting and little things embroidered into their pockets, because it was commercial. Now, early American advisors, you will see pictures of them wearing this, some of them with Stetsons in this design. Again, these were not issue uniforms, these were commercial hunting suits that advisors bought on their own to wear. The next camouflage, of course, is the very common snowsuit. This goes over the parka. Now, is this one U.S. government issue? I don't know. I've never been able to find any particular markings on this, and it fits over my parka. And I see soldiers with something like this. Is it Canadian? Is it Norwegian? Is it something the United States buys off the shelf? I have never been able to find out, but you can see, even it's got white on the zippers and things like that. So, I have never been able to find one with U.S. government, shall we say, markings. Next uniform is not a U.S. uniform. This is something in Southeast Asia, the Tiger Stripe. Now, one of the members of this club was a LERP in Cambodia. Sorry, he couldn't be in Cambodia because we were not in Cambodia. He was west of the border in Vietnam. And he told me this is what he wore. This was very popular with the South Vietnamese. These are uniforms called Tiger Stripe. They are um, made in Asia. Uh, some elite units of the, of the Republic of South Vietnam wore these. And many American advisors and special operators would wear this over the plain green that was the standard U.S. Army issue. We're going to see the tiger stripes going to come back. But this one here is very small. It's probably an original, I put it, Arvin size, Army of the Republic of Vietnam. And like I said, they were made in Southeast Asia. Uh, some people tell me they were made in Okinawa. Some people tell me Thailand. Others tell me yeah, they were made right in Vietnam. But it's called tiger stripe. And the owner was alert. You mean a long yep. range reconnaissance patrol? Yeah, long range reconnaissance patrol. Okay. Okay, American Army did. Because if they were in Cambodia, they didn't sometimes want to wear anything that would trace them to America. They would even carry foreign weapons and a non U.S. uniform, and they wouldn't have their dog tags. Yep. All right? All right. Well, as Vietnam progressed, we're going to go on. There was a demand for camouflage uniforms. Well, the ERDL design was already there. So finally they started issuing uniforms starting about 1967, but only to special, uh, special forces, uh, LERPs, rangers. The average American soldier never saw one of these, okay? These were given really basically to specialist troops, and you can see by the tags, all right, gives you the information. Now, sometimes there's also a washing or information tag on the inside, let's see, this one doesn't have it. Now, some of these are 100% cotton, and the one next to it, I think, is poplin, okay? And this one here is Marine Corps marked. Okay, the Marines just took the regular uniform and did their patch on it. But let me see if I can find anything here. Yeah, there's a label here. Okay. Now, the leaf pattern is going to keep popping up, the you know, Engineer Research Development Lab, but they keep playing with the colors. A light green, a darker green, a light brown, darker brown, maybe add some black. So you start getting these modifications. That's why I got these two uniforms next to each other. Now this one here might have been washed a few times. This one here might be never issued. So you can, you can see that, you know, the contrast sometimes between the two, even though they're marked the same as coat camouflage. All right. Near the end of the Vietnam War, they started experimenting again with, diff with a different leaf pattern. And that's this one right here. Sometimes people call it early wood woodland. Um, I got this at Fort Bragg at the thrift store. For some reason, these never got out to too many troops. Some of the airborne got it again, the rangers got it. 
Special Forces got it. But the helmet covers, for some reason, were really mass-produced. And as I mentioned in a previous video, there was a time in the supply room where you could get the Vietnam leaf pattern. Right? You could get the Vietnam leaf pattern. You could get this pattern. And then later on, the later woodland patterns were popping up. So in the same unit, you'd have three different helmet covers. And let's see if there's anything else in the other information labeled. No. Okay? All right. Now, let's go back to this one here. The, the, the whole idea behind the BDU uniform was you washed it, you hung it up, you put it on. It had that wrinkled look. It was a field uniform. It was designed to be worn in the field. All right? You weren't allowed to starch it. You weren't supposed to iron it. Well, guess what? As soon as it went out to the troops, the troops were happy. But in every unit, there are people who engage in a thing we call chicken shit. And they decided that this field uniform should be the equivalent of a Class B uniform when you were in the office. So my next one is the, B, is the woodland pattern that eventually became general issue. You will notice it is starched, and it is ironed, and it is pressed, and it looks really nice. Yeah. sergeants would uh, break no, starch twice a day. That's right. Yeah, and he wasn't crawling around in the mud. Exactly. If you were in the office, and if you were... If you were supposed to be a role model for your troops, you would break starch twice a day. It means you wore this till noon, then you took it off and you put another one on, and this way it had that sharp look. So you, you almost made it into a dress uniform. In the army, there were two guys. But you this. Saw the guy that was dirty. Yeah. With dirty boots. This is your actual. Yeah. This is your real one. Okay. Yeah. Now, what I want you to understand is, it's the pattern. It's 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 called woodland. Okay. And the idea was that we would have a pattern for Europe or anywhere where you're going to be in the forest. Its sister uniform is right here, the chocolate chip. The chocolate chip was going to be the desert uniform, okay? So you, all you needed was two uniforms. You got a green uniform, and you got a tan uniform, okay? okay. But the tan, the, this uniform, okay, this was general issue. Everybody wore this, and that was the beauty of it. The Marines wore it. The Army wore it. The Air Force wore it, Navy Seabees wore it, the Coast Guard wore it. Later on, uh, the Czechoslovakian Army, the Serbian Army, the Philippine Army, everybody liked the woodland pattern, okay? Because on the it free worked. <laughs> okay, it worked. The desert uniform did not work. All right, General Schwarzkopf was the only guy who looked cool in this, okay? He used to walk around with his chocolate chip. Now, this was not an issue uniform. This was, or, this was organizational. In other words, like your field jacket and your mess kit and your rifle, your helmet, you got issued this. And when the guys went to Desert Storm, there really wasn't enough of them, so they had to crank them out in a hurry, and most guys got issued two of them. When the war was over, a lot of guys wanted to keep it, and what they did is they allowed each soldier to keep one of these so he could march in the parade back home. This is what Grandpa did during the war, okay? Because they had decided this was a crappy uniform in the desert. It's got too much brown in it. So what they did is, we'll transition over here, they went to what's called the, the three color. Okay, this one here belonged to somebody who served with the president, so it's got all its patches, this is the way I got it. But this is what we call the three color desert uniform. And that's going to replace the chocolate chip altogether. The chocolate chip is obsolete, it's gone, that's it. Alright, so you have this uniform, again, three color pattern, I'll flip it over. You want to get a better view of it, okay? With its boonie hat. And now, in between here, I have a special one that most people don't see anymore. This is the desert night uniform. Now, you look at all these crazy dots and things. This thing was designed to fool Soviet infrared night vision goggles, okay? There's pants with it. All right, there's a label here. I don't know if you can get a good picture of it or not. All right. But this parka was designed to confuse Soviet night vision goggles. And it's known as the night desert uniform. You throw it over your uniform. It's a parka. Cheap, you know, cloth parka. Now, you would think that now the taxpayers of America, Congress, everybody is happy. There are now, let me do this, two uniforms. You've got woodland and you got three color desert. Everybody wears it. Marines wear it. Airmen wear it. 
Navy wears it. Coast Guard wears it. Nice and easy. Two camouflage uniforms. Okay? So what happens? I'll tell you what happens. Marine Corps. Marine Corps does not want to wear what the Serbian Army wears, what Osama bin Laden wears the field jacket in woodland pattern. The art, and most of all, the Army wears it. So what happens? The Marines decide they will create a unique uniform that everybody knows is Marine. Number two, they're going to patent it so no one can copy it, no one can make it. It's for them and them only. Goodbye. All right, we're going to start there with the revolution where we went from about two, nice article here, we went from about two standard uniforms to about ten, and we're going to see what happened. All right, let's go see it. Let's go see it, okay. Okay, make sure you get the label up here, okay. We're going to then start with what is known as MARPAT, which means Marine Pattern. The Marines wanted a unique uniform that they would control the copy of. Not They would not license it to be made by any civilian companies except for the Marine Corps. And they have embedded inside the design every now and then. Okay, when you see in the pocket here, a nice Marine. But they also have embedded in the cloth every now and then a little thing that says Eagle O. Yeah, there it is. USMC. Okay, so now the Army's not going to wear it, the Air Force is not going to wear it, the Serbians aren't going to wear it, the Philippine Army's not going to wear it. It is unique to the Marine Corps. And it's called MARPAT, or Marine Pattern. Okay? Now, they need a desert uniform. So here we have the Marine Desert Uniform. Okay? Here's the label who made it. Okay? Blouse Desert Marpat. This is still the tags from the clothing sales store. Okay? This is the real deal. Okay? And it is marine embroidered on the pocket again. And somewhere in the design it should have USMC. Sometimes I can't find it. It's cleverly hidden in the design. But this is the Marine Corps Desert Uniform. Up there it is. Okay, you found it. Great. All right. Now, with the Marines going to this digital thing, everybody else had to follow suit. And that's what's creating the problem. The next one I'm going to show you is what's called aquaflage, or the blueberry, which to me is one of the dumbest, even though the Army is also extremely dumb, uniforms. And that's right here. This here. Look at this nice Constitution right there, the USS Constitution, U.S. Navy, the guy's name. It's got a nice hat. And this is called the Blueberry by most troops, or aquaflage. Now, why do you need camouflage aboard a ship? First of all, if you want to hide from the Chief Petty Officer in the details, I would recommend Battleship Gray. The other problem is, what if you fall overboard? If you fall overboard and you're riding the waves, and we're talking about the ocean, not the ones you got drunk at the NCO club, you're going to be in real trouble because this helps blend you into the waves. If I fall into the water, I would rather wear, you know, get, you know, Guantanamo Bay prisoner orange or something where I can be spotted in the ocean. I don't want to blend in to the ocean. As a matter of fact, this is 2017. This uniform is no longer being issued. Oh, look at that. They even have USN written into them, yep. just like Saw the Marines. That. Got it. All right. So this uniform is uh, being phased out. You won't be seeing any more. Although there was a question whether it had what they call CDI factor, which means chicks dig it. You know, did you look cool in this when you were, you know, when you were off pace? You know, would, would, it, would it draw attention to a female? You know, I don't know if any other directions. To, no, okay. Now, this is what's replacing it. This is now the new Marine work, Marine, sorry, Navy work uniform. Now, this is bound to catch on because I'm just on TV yesterday. I was watching on, I think it's Channel 2 Seals, and this is what they're wearing. They're wearing a variation of this. Um, this is catching on. Uh, this is for the Navy. Uh, if you're a CB or a SEAL or any kind of ground mission, this is what you're going to wear. It's... 
again, it's similar to the Marine camouflage, but different enough because the Navy has to have its uniform, and the Marines have to have their uniform. All right. All right, the next uniform is the one that I most dislike, and that is the universal camouflage pattern. And this came out just as I was retiring, so this, you can see, is... You got this when you were still in, correct? No, I got it just as I was leaving. Somebody got it for me as a gift, almost a going away present. Um, this is the uniform that soldiers hate. Um, it's referred to as the Paisley uniform. It was supposed to be universal. It was supposed to be good in snow, urban combat, desert, or jungle. And the belief by most soldiers is it is totally useless in all those environments. That the only place where it would make sense is if you were defending a factory making paisley cloth and you were hiding behind a sofa or something like that. It's just, to me, I always found it an ugly design, but I mean, that could be me. Anyway, when this got issued, the question always was, did somebody make a lot of money on this? Was this chosen by a sleeper cell of Soviet agents or Taliban sympathizers? You know, did uh, Stevie Wonder approve this for the American Army? What the hell happened that this got even chosen? And then, of course, once it was chosen as the uniform, they had to make poncho liners, they had to make combat packs, they had to make body armor in this pattern. So somebody made a lot of money. And according to the stories, when they first presented this to soldiers, this was like their last choice. And they were given, you know, which uniform did you think would be good? And this was like, mm. Well, maybe someday Congress will investigate why we even went to this. All right? Now, the Air Force, since everybody else has got to have their unique uniform, they're not going to be the only ones wearing the old BDU. So they went to what's called the Airman's Uniform, which is a form of Tiger Stripe. That's uh, ABU, Airman yeah. Battle Uniform. Okay, and what happened is, even in Afghanistan, guys who were like pararescue and other ones, they didn't want to wear this. They did not like this uniform. They felt it was not an effective camouflage uniform. So, the next uniform I'm going to show you is called Multicam. Now, the Army, there was demand by soldiers, we need something better in Afghanistan than that, okay, the all-purpose. And the government had given a lot of money to the Multicam Corporation to develop a couple of uniforms, which they decided they weren't going to buy. Then all of a sudden, they were buying them. And the Multicam became the uniform for Afghanistan duty, okay? Now, what I have on this uniform, just so you know for the fun of it. All right, first of all, this here, you can't find them anymore. They are so, they are rare. It was, a, it was a nice patch, and rumor has it the guy who designed it was walking by a church and hit by lightning, so that's why they don't make it anymore. It stands for, who would Jesus shoot? Okay. Okay? <clears throat> that's funny. All right? Over here, these are rare. These are very hard to find. This is the infrared flag detector. That's so your helicopter can tell you're friendly. Okay, um, it bounces. The Taliban, needless to say, will rip these off an American casualty and take it with them because it's it's the identifier. ISAF. There's two versions of this. One says it stands for International Security Assistance Force, and guys who were there goes I see Americans fighting. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that's you know part of the camouflage multicam. Now next to it is what's called the combat shirt, which I wanted to show people. Somebody questioned it in the other video. This replaces your T-shirt because when you're wearing body armor, all these pockets are inaccessible anyway, and they just trap heat. So this one here, it also has a little, let's see, I can open it here. It's going to give me a hard time now. There's a little doorway here. This reveals also the infrared patch, which is also found on helmets. Again, this reflects back to the, to the infrared in the the guy in the, in the helicopter. Uh, recently, there's been an investigation. There were some American special forces that were killed from a B-1 bomber strike, and they were carrying strobes or something, and they were saying they couldn't see it, and they ended up dropping bombs on Americans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Now, I've also heard that some of these International Security Assistance Force, they're written in other Afghan languages, like Pashtun or whatever. So I don't know whether which one that one is. And the patch here, this is another favorite one, WWJBD. It's what would Jack Bauer do? Okay. But again, they're not issued. They're just guys put on. You can see this got reinforced elbows. Okay. So this is a possibility. 
Now, next to it is the current Army uniform. Now, the question you're going to ask is, how can a 70-year-old retiree get these? Because if you go into clothing sales with your retired ID, they're not supposed to sell you any field gear. They're not supposed to sell you anything that would compete with the Army surplus door in town. There is one exception. If you volunteer or are assigned to work with Junior ROTC, you're authorized to continue to wear field gear even though you're a retiree, as long as you maintain weight standards and grooming standards. Now, the grooming standards are easy. Get a haircut and shave. The beauty of this camouflage uniform is that it hides the fact that you no longer meet weight standards. Very nice, but if anybody out there who's watching this video, if you are a retired military or former military in the United States, check out the junior ROTC high schools in your area. Find one maybe of your branch or any branch. You can come in as a volunteer and assist in drilling ceremonies, marksmanship, be a chaperone when they go to drill competition or when they go to field trips to military museums or, or military bases. And you can, you can help a younger generation out. And the junior ROTC, it's not in every school and not every branch, you know, branches are spread out. Um, just find out who the senior military instructor is. Give them your, you know, your background and tell them when you're available to help and maybe you can assist some young people and get back into uniform. Can you wear your uh, rank, stuff like yes. that? Yes. You can, you know, if you're retired, you can wear your rank, everything former else. Former service? If you're for, former service, whatever was your last rank, you know, as long as you're honorably discharged and you're helping them out. And you know what? If you got your old uniform, fine. I try to stay current. That's the only reason I got the OCPs. But I could have been wearing my BDUs, which was really the uniform I wore during most of my career. And as we can see, we have a, quite an extensive collection here. Um, somebody asked me, he says, why do you keep the old uniforms? Because if you stay in long enough, it becomes the old uniform. You've got to go buy the new uniform. <laughs> I'm waiting for the old uh, green fatigues to come back. Yes. They probably will. The OG 107s. When I went in, they were... They, you had to iron them. They were horrible. Then they went to wash and wear OG 107s. Actually, mine was uh, cac I mean, uh, uh, starch, and then they went to the yeah. old uh, wash and wear. Now, we got you here in the background. You said you wore tiger stripes? Yes. Because well, you were a LERP, right? Yes. Yeah. I wore the pants and yeah. something else on top. Uh huh. But the pants, sometimes I had the, you know, the tiger pants. Tiger stripe, yeah. And uh, sometimes I would wear uh, just a Vietnam shirt. Uh huh. Oh, a black thing. It depends on the situation. Mm -hmm. You have to remember one thing. We weren't supposed to be there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. We weren't supposed to be there. What weapons so. did you carry when you were alert? I had a Tommy gun. Okay. And a 38. Mm -hmm. That's what I carry. I know when they started giving awards to people there, they would never say they were in Cambodia or Laos. They would say west of Chang Chu village, which if you looked on the map, you realized it was on the border. <laughs> I don't remember my mother writing me a letter. Uh -huh. I'm glad you're not in Cambodia. Like, eh? no kidding. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> but you couldn't say that. Couldn't say that. Mm. That's like I, I found letters from my uncle who died in World War II, and they're always somewhere in France. Somewhere in France. All right, Stan, thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah, nice quickie. However, a lot of guys didn't like the look of the dark, the regular collar, so they had a dark green collar. In fact, even though this guy's an officer, this is an enlisted uniform. Well, the officers always had two collar uh, clasps here to hold the collar together, enlisted only one. 